Cool. I'm going to share my screen here. What are we talking about today? So we were going to continue our discussion from last week about implicits. So we had done implicits on Scala 2, and we thought it might be interesting to talk about implicits or the, the new things, <laughs> the, the artists formerly known as implicits um, on Scala 3. Uh, so we'll, uh, we've got our symposium repository open here, which right now is on Scala 2. Uh, so we'll first move it over to Scala 3, and then we'll look at some of that uh, implicit or, or not implicit functionality. And maybe along the way, we can play with some of the other uh, Scala 3 features. Yeah, Could you give it uh, one more bump, one more size bump, maybe? Yeah, you got it. Boom. How's that? And we will get this off over the side. This is, uh, we'll see. We may be doing a little bit less of the terminal. So maybe I'll bring that down for now. Uh, though, actually, I like my compilation error. So maybe I'll give myself at least a little bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, first thing we're going to need to do is we are going to need to go back here because we're going to need to go here. And we're going to need to change this to 3.1.1. I will reload this. And this was compiling before, so we'll have at least one data point on what it takes to migrate a small project. Okay, so we got a couple things here. So I think it's all, Scal3 is a little bit more, wants to make sure you use the parentheses if the method was defined with the parentheses. So uh, yeah, that's kind of helping us do the right thing because the chunk build.make has the parentheses because that's a side affecting thing. So, okay, great. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is it? Oh, I think I did this. The... Ah. <laughs> I need to put the type arguments before parentheses. Okay. Then I got this thing that's kind of interesting. I, I realized that I think we had our own. I don't think, I don't know if we really made. Oh, so we had this type trace equals string. And somehow so this was defined on line 171. But then here it didn't get picked up, which is kind of interesting. Like that seems like a little bit of a semantic difference, right? So it was defined yeah, in outer yeah. scope, but it was just defined below as a type alias. So I guess if I pull this up to before this scope instead of after, I'm guessing that will work fine, which is interesting. That's kind of an interesting one. Yeah, I didn't, uh, hmm. I may have I to make a little note for a little, uh, bug report here uh advanced is not a member of recursion let's see i thought we had a we had advanced here hmm. and we have recursion so that's interesting i mean i'm sure i can just this is probably like auto imported for me at some point but that's also interesting um <laughs> I've seen some of these can be a little bit like they kind of only show up of maybe if there are other compilation errors. Um, so what is this saying? Type of implicit definition needs to be given explicitly. Yep. So, okay. I think we can even, VS code may know more than. Yay. Perfect. Okay. okay. We got that. Then, so then was something that I think was like a soft like keyword in Scala 2, but it became a hard keyword in Scala 3 because it's used in the new like, if braceless else. parentheses list syntax. So I don't know, maybe I'll just call this like and then or something. Sounds good. I think I have one more use of that because we were showing these two different examples. And then I just actually need to use that. You can see how now it's highlighted because it's a keyword. And let's see. Yeah, this is another one. Scala gets a little bit weirder I think about variants in things that are in other objects. So I think this will solve this one. Let's oh, that's see. odd. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, and then this thing needs to be like a case class. So maybe I can just pull this whole thing out of here because it's really just a oh, yeah. very simple type. So maybe if I just pull it out of here. Well, no, there needs to be the O and the O2 there. 
Oh yeah, I can. Oh, maybe maybe that was my. Maybe I really should have had the. Yeah. yeah it could have just worked. Maybe yeah. Accident. Maybe we should bring it back. Yeah. Right. Let's see. Uh, That's let's happy, see. or we've introduced other issues. Now we've we haven't found. Hmm. Well, it looks like it might oh. need to be saved one more time. Oh, there we go. Okay. Ooh, okay. All right. And now we're saying we can't call macro trait logging defined in the same. Ah, oh, yes. This is a really annoying um, Scala 3 issue where for some reason, even though this type logging, which is defined in this class in the same file, has nothing really shouldn't, has nothing to do with the macro definition. But you cannot even use a type in a macro in the same file it's defined for whatever reason. There's an open issue on this on Dottie. I don't know <laughs> what the priority is, but basically that's pretty uh, pretty obnoxious. Um, for now, I guess we could just comment out maybe this stuff. This, uh, this and just, just do this file or just this yeah, definition? I'll just, I'll just do zio. Yeah, or comment out the whole file. Let's, sorry. Yeah, let's try that one more time. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Let's just do that for now. All right, perfect. Okay, and I think we have one more. What's where did this come from? Fiber refs walking example. Oh, because we're using the provide custom. <laughs> Maybe if I make this provide custom layer. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. All right, so we, that's probably an interesting video to go back to, and maybe there are some things we can open there. But okay, so we have successfully migrated our symposium to Scala 3, which is actually, I mean, you know, if we're talking about like going from one major version of a language to another, like that was what, probably like five or six minutes. So that's not bad for something that's not completely trivial here. Mm -hmm. um, but now we are we are ready to go on to kind of our um, the, the, the core of our discussion today, and so um, I, I, we spent a bunch of time on like implicits and some of the details of them last time. But like big picture, I think implicits were both like one of the most distinctive features in Scala two, as well as one of the most maligned features in in Scala two that kind of got people. I mean, you could you could look at some of these examples where you're like you just have like no idea what the heck is going on here, and you know I think you got people who like really like I, I don't know maybe you hate this too strong word, but really got to kind of have to like hate the language or at least have a really bad time with them and their teams in terms of doing things with just like what is going on here, and mm -hmm. so um, while the the Scala three developers definitely tried to like push forward in a lot of other areas. And I think really overall did a great job of like making the Scala language just like push the envelope in different ways. I think this was one way where like they they really said like, okay, we want to like do something about this. We want to try to kind of take this like pain point and this like feedback we heard and do something about it. Um, and so the way I like to think about the, the change between Scala 2 and Scala 3 for, for this, as well as actually for a lot of things, um, is, uh, I would say, more specific tools or more specific jobs and focus on intent versus mechanics. So one of the, one of the nice things about Scala 2 here is we, we can actually still, so far, use implicit and basically use everything we use in Scala 2, so it'll be really easy to, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, Copilot. Uh, to see what things look like in the before and, and after world. And so I, I think the, the first observation to have here that I think is actually a good one just to go back and be more aware of like Scala 2 even, is that uh, in Scala 2, this implicit keyword, keyword gets used in a lot of different ways um, that really describe completely different things when you when you think about it. So like if we look at kind of different uses of the um, term implicit, right, we can have a couple of things. So we could have implicit val my special int, int is equal to one. 
So here, what we're doing is we could say we are adding a value to the Scala compiler's secret type level dictionary, <laughs> right? What, one, one way to think about all of these implicits is that like the Scala compiler is maintaining this one, basically we call it a dictionary, we call it a map, but this one like global map from like types to values of those types. And what we're doing here is we're telling Scala like add something to your dictionary. Like for your like implicit scope dictionary, whatever, take the value int and add int to arrow one. That's something you should add to your dictionary. And so that's one use we get out of this implicit word. Um, so then we could also do something like f my special addition. And so maybe this takes an int and it's gonna return an int. And it's also going to take a implicit my special int. And it's just gonna add x in my special int. And so now, <clears throat> and sorry, I'm blowing my voice. Um, we're, I think we're pretty used to just from like having done things probably in Scala for a while, like seeing these and be like, oh, implicit, implicit, this like seems very normal. But really like when we think about these, this, this is actually doing something completely different than this. This is adding a value to this type level dictionary. This is actually looking up a value in the type level dictionary. So if we thought about this in terms of like values, like this would be like put and this would be get. And you know, you might, if, if you weren't very used to like this implicit thing, you might think, well, it's really confusing if you use the same word for like put and get, if you just like had it in different places, right? If it was just like dictionary. And if you use dictionary in one place, you like put something in, if you use a different place, you get something out. Um, so you could say, well, this is kind of confusing. And then we actually use it we could probably come up with more ways, but I think in at least one way pretty practically, which is I do this like implicit class, my special int ops, right? And then we know I do like my well private val self is an int. I can do the extent any val, and now I can do def add special. And this is going to, well, I don't need an int here, but I'm gonna take my other special int. And now I'm gonna do self plus my special int. And so now in addition to using it here as like the lookup in the same way as it here, I'm now using it here in this basically completely different way of defining extension methods. And so between these things we have like, as, as we can see, like, it's this very powerful mechanism. We can do all these different things we want with it. And I mean, here we've kind of scratched the surface of kind of the, how we can have one derive another and we can build all this complex machinery on top of it. But just here, we've seen these like completely three different ways that we're using these terms. So one of the things that they, they try to do in, in Scala 3 is just kind of break that up of say like, hey, if these are actually different things, let's give different words to them. Um, and we'll see that. Uh, in a, in a minute here. Um, and I think the second thing you can see from this, and I think particularly from this example here, is there's a real, um, we're almost forced to think a lot about mechanics here. So like, just the fact that this is like a, a class, like, okay, well, I got to think about like, now, I, right, what I really want to do is I just wanted to add this extension method. Um, but now you've told me the way I have to do it is I have to do it by creating this class. And so now that you've told me that I have to create a class, like I have to think about like all these different things that I have to think about when I make classes. Like, should they be final? Should they not be final, right? They should actually probably be final. Um, should this thing be a val or not a val? It has to be a val for this to be an any val. Should it be private or not private? It should kind of be private here because we don't want like the user to call like, 10.self, that would be like weird and confusing. Um, right, so we got like a bunch of these like things here. And even like, okay, I've got to have the parameters. Like we've got to kind of think about a lot of mechanics to do this when what we really wanted to just do is like add this operator to this thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think this uh, the extension method is where this is most obvious. But we can actually also see it with some of the other ones. So like um, 
this my special int here, you could say like, why do I have to give this thing a name at all? Like the whole point of these implicits is they live in this like shadow world where we look them up by their types. So like here, I mean, I happen to call it my special int, but I could have called it foo here, right? The point of this is we're not looking it up by its name, we're looking it up by its type. So why do I have to put this type here? And in fact, I can kind of create problems for myself by like the names of types, if they like overlap, I can have conflicting names. And so that's why like, if you ever like, look cats, you get these like super long of, you know, my invariant semi-functor for this K low priority too. And you're like, ah. Um, so I think th those are kind of the two things like I would note about like Scala 3 or Scala 2, just kind of thinking about Scala 3 and like, how is it, how is it different? And, why is it different? So like when you get to Scala 3, it's not just like here are some like arbitrary like things that are different, but like here's kind of the motivation and like the driving force behind them. And then you can kind of see the method of the madness. And you know, if you don't remember exactly like the syntax for doing something, you can probably get there or you can at least look it up. Does anyone have any questions on those? observations before we um, forego to actually doing the Scala 3 stuff. I don't see anything. Uh, nope. Okay. So that means it was either boring or clear. <laughs> we will see. Um, okay. So if we think about how Scala 3 addresses this, and ooh, your little equals thing was so pretty there. <laughs> It'll automatically do that for me. Looks like not. <laughs> Yeah, with, uh, with with Copilot, I think it only looks above mostly. So if you did yeah. it below, it may have done it. So in Scala three, this implicit keyword gets really broken up into three other keywords. And so the first one we have, not explicit def now, uh, is we have this new extension keyword that we use for as the name implies, adding extension methods. We've got a given keyword, which says adds things to our implicit dictionary. And then we've got using, which looks things up in our implicit dictionary. And so we, we got a, some nice stuff around each of these because each of these can be a little more specialized now. So we can uh, really focus. And I mean, the, the language developer is really kind of focused on like, okay, let's make each of these be as nice as it can be for its use case versus to a certain extent, I think the implicit was trying to be like all things, all people. And so it wasn't the best at any one thing. Uh, but now we've got these three different uh, keywords. And so if we, take our examples and maybe try to translate them over. So the first thing we had was we had this idea we wanted to add a value to this type level dictionary. And so that's this case of given. We wanna add something to the implicit dictionary, we use given. And so given basically just becomes like we had la uh, val or def or lazy val in uh, Scala 2, given just becomes another, um, word that we use before we give a name to something. So instead of like implicit val, I can say um, given here. And then I think I've got uh, it's different as, no, I'm like, I'm gonna try to remember my, uh, what do I have? Is it doesn't know what given is? I think it's uh, not. No. Let me check one thing. Hold on a second. Hmm. 
I should say given int equals. Is it is it width maybe, or is that a different? Uh, oh oh, hold on a sec, hold on a sec. I think well, so here let me do let me import the build here because I think we're not getting the best messages. And I think what we need to do is we need to give ourselves some scopes here because we've got now we've got ambiguous implicits here. Oh, of course. So I'm gonna give myself an object. Scala three, and I'm going to put it around here, and we'll give ourselves an object Scala two. And now I will hopefully feel less sick. Okay, there we go. All right, much okay. better. So, uh, and maybe I'll maybe just to start, um, I'll make I'll, let me let me start by making it because I kind of as I was doing that I I took away one of my punchlines, but. Okay, so we see the first use here is if we want to add something to this dictionary, instead of implicit val, we just use this given keyword. And so um, I guess we can debate whether we like the given or not. If you go back to the Scala forums, there was like a ton of debate about like what these words should be. That is probably like way more time people should have spent. But um, I guess this is what they came up with. And you know the idea is it is, is given to you by the Scala compiler and it has also like a religious you know, you know given unto you is the special int you may may do what you what you want with it. Uh, but we use this given keyword and then if we want to just use the most direct translation from Scala 2 we just use given instead of implicit val and everything else is basically the same. Um, but what you can also do that's kind of cool so this is called a named given here is you can have what's called an anonymous given. And so I can actually um, just do this, which now this is starting to look like a little bit different than, than Scala 2, because you can't really do anything like this in Scala 2. Uh, but there's some logic to this of one of the things we said was the whole point of these either givens or implicits in Scala 2 was that we were adding them to this like type level dictionary. And if the whole point of type level dictionary is we're going to add them based on their types, right? We're going to add this as the int and we're going to look it up just being an int, then the name we give to it doesn't really matter. Um, and in fact, I think it can sometimes cause, cause issues, both like more serious and more minor. So I think the little bit more serious is sometimes you can have these like name conflicts if you have like the same name of the implicit in two different places. I think a much more minor one is just like you kind of have to think every time you do one of these of like, what am I going to call it? And you know, should I call this or should I call that? And it's just some like mental tax that you don't have to do if you don't name it at all. And I think overall it can actually be like a good um, practice because one of the things that I think we talked about last week is being a best practice with implicits is you generally want them to have this property of coherence, which means there's only ever one of them for a given type. Uh, so like if we say um, the like, uh, so the, the way you associatively combine integers, at least, or maybe I'll, maybe I'll do strings because we can talk about new types of integers, but the way you associatively combine strings is basically one way you do it. You like, concatenate them together. And so there's never an issue of like, you look up one versus you look at the other. You just, you want the instance for string, that's the instance for string. Versus like execution context would be a, a terrible thing to have as an implicit thing because I could import, you know, the global execution context. I could import some kind of parasitic execution context. I could do Blocking execution context would come up with all sorts of different execution contexts. Uh, so that would be an anti pattern of something that we want to use as a given. And so this anonymous syntax, uh, I would say, pushes us in that direction of seeing that, like, what we're doing is we're saying this is a thing for a type. And so I think it gets us thinking in that uh, way of being coherent. So the second use we saw was this looking up. And so that we did with this, my special addition thing down here. And so this one, we replace this implicit word with using. And again, here we can, if we want to, 
here I'm giving it a name. I don't actually have to give it a name. Uh, so I can write it like this. And whether I want to or not can, I think, depend on a little bit of what I'm doing down here. So like if I want to actually use this thing directly, if I want to like add something to it, then I can give it a name. And I can write it like this. But sometimes I don't actually need to directly do something with it. I just need it because some other method I'm calling is going to use it. Yeah, and it's going to very efficiently create our other method here. Uh, and then, so yes, yeah, so I'll do this uh, other method. Oh, ooh, that was not, that was, not, that was not good, uh, Copilot. Uh, that was really not good. Other mother, Freudian uh, oh, other boy, oh, there. Boy. <laughs> uh, so if I'm just going to call this other uh, method, then I don't really need this name here. So I can just take it away here. Yes, naming is hard, and they've dissolved the naming problem. <laughs> Which is going to dissolve everything. There's nothing left. <laughs> so that's the, the second one. And then the third one is this adding extension methods. And I think this is probably the one where we've gotten like the most improvement. Because before, we had this whole thing. And uh, as I've kind of harped on, there were a couple of things that were like very like specific implementation that we had to do, and it's a little bit long. So in Scala 3, we can take this whole thing and I can do extension x int. And then I'll do it first, the, yeah, the well, compile uh, I'm sorry, I didn't see it, the using. I don't do that yet. Is it with or colon? I forget sometimes. I think, I think colon. Okay. Uh, or maybe just nothing. It might be nothing. Yeah, I think it can. Yeah, I think it can actually be on one line. I thought. Let me see. Yeah. 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 So th this is the most. Uh, we'll, we'll see how we, if we want to have multiple methods, we can do that. But this is like the most concise way you can do it. And so I, I think the. The disadvantage of a lot of these things is you can see we're just like introducing new language like patterns right of we've introduced another new word of extension here we've introduced like this concept that you can have this variable being before the death. So like there's a little bit of just kind of I think getting used to the different patterns um, and I think there are probably a little bit more of them, especially just like if you, I think most of us are probably not programming in Scala 3 every day yet so like when we do stuff like this, there's like a little bit of like, okay, let's get back in like that mindset. Um, but I think there's also a lot to be said for this, right? So we've got this keyword here that I think is probably as specific and explicit a keyword as you could possibly have to tell us what we're trying to do here, right? We're trying to define an extension method. We say, what is the thing we want to define an extension method on? So here we want this to be an extension method on ints. And then all we do is we just define it, right? Everything after this first bit, other than the fact that I kind of moved this like variable around and I did this extension thing, everything here is how I would write any other def. It's exactly the same. And so, if, especially if you can kind of compare it with this, you, you can see some of the things that we were maybe accepting a little bit that we don't have to accept anymore, right? Where like this doesn't even have the concept of a class. Like, I don't really, is some class going to get instantiated somewhere? So this thing is going to be called, I, I don't, I don't really know. I mean, obviously I, I hope this is done by the compiler in as efficient way as possible, but what this kind of tells you is like, you don't need to know, like you ask for an extension method on this thing, there will now be an extension method on this thing. And I mean, maybe we can just, yeah, we can call it just to verify for ourselves that like, we really did add the extension method. Oh, what am I doing? X at 12. <laughs> and there's probably no 12 dot self. You know, they probably uh, <laughs> don't do that stuff. So. Or maybe there is. <laughs> What's maybe there is. That's interesting. Uh, I don't know where that came from. I guess. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> someone else did not do their private vow. That is. Uh, that is funny. What is that? That might be. Is that because of our scholar too? No, it can't be. Right. That's crazy. Uh, that's I awesome. was just I was just joking, but it looks like they might not have done privacy. 
Yeah. Is that an implementation yeah. detail leaking? Oh my goodness. I think that is an implementation detail leaking. Oh, wow. That's hilarious. That is really, that's really funny. So it uh, must, okay. it, so, it basically is still implemented in terms of the old way. It's just that they didn't make well, sure. Well, so, so, so that's actually one interesting watch out with like everything in Scala 3 right now is like the like, the language is different, but the standard library they use is still shared between Scala 2 and Scala 3. So there are actually a bunch of cases where you can get like a little bit of like weird uh, stuff because of that. Um, maybe if we have the chance, I, I, I can show, show you one other one. Um, but okay, let's, let's kind of uh, keep playing. Let me just make sure that's only stuff. because of that, because that's really curious. Or is no, just- it, 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 okay. it, is, it is definitely Scala because there's an implicit conversion from rich from int to rich int. Um, well, it seems like self is still defined though. Okay, so oh, I see. So it's it might be a rich end thing. All right. But yeah, it, it, it's one hundred percent a rich end thing. Yeah, but it's just <laughs> yeah, probably that should have been private. But ah, uh, yes, yes, okay, okay. But it wasn't our extension method. No, it was it was okay. our extension method. It was their extension. Method. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, okay. So so going back to this, so you can see how like this focuses a lot, a lot on just intention here, right? Like I just say I want an extension. I don't even have any concept of like this introducing a class or not. That's not something I'm thinking about. And so all these other things I did, like, do I need to use any val? Well, it's not relevant because I'm not even, there's no class here. It doesn't need to be final. There's no class. Um, so it's, it's really um, about as uh, focused on intention. And I think probably about as terse as it could be to like express this intention. Um, uh, we did get a question. Is it possible yeah. to name from Don? Uh, is it possible to name this? So can I give it? I don't know. Uh, int ops. Like if you wanted to explicitly do do that. I don't know. I don't know if you can have named extensions uh, in case you, in case you want to like import this method explicitly. I think was the question. Let me make sure I get the question right. Is there still a way to name the extension method so I can explicitly import it in other scopes? I'm not sure if you could ever name an extension, important extension method in other scopes because it was always defined on sort of a class. So even if we go down to this other implicit final class version, I don't think you can import add special. You could refer to the class and all, but. Um, yeah, I think we actually, uh, well, so I know we at least can do, let's do another, maybe let's see, where are we outside of this scope? Um, Object test. Okay, so I got this new scope here, and so obviously, if I do one dot my special edition two, this is not going to uh, work. Um, but look at this. So one of the actual nice things in Scala three is the the error messages are better, and so it says, hey, I didn't find my special edition two, but this import might fix the problem, and so I can import this. my special edition two thing, and now this will work. So I can definitely import by the names of the operators. Um, let's, so let, let's first do kind of a simpler example of, of I think what Domdor is looking for. So what I can do here is if I wanna have more than one method, I believe it's the, oh, I think it may actually be the braces that I use, um, or maybe I can get away without the braces, but. So let's do my special edition three and my special edition four. Let's make sure that works. Okay, so now I've got this thing here. And so let's try doing those. So here I can do dot, what do I get dot completion? Maybe I'll get dot completion. Um, okay, well, let me try my, oh, there we go. Let's try my special edition three. Okay. So we can see here, if I wanna group my extension methods for the same type, I can put them all in the same scope. Uh, here, I was a little bit careful with the braces. Let me see if I can get rid of them. Yeah, I think you don't need them. And you don't, yeah, need, I don't need colon them. either or anything. I, I get a little confused sometimes in Scala 3 when you need that colon or sometimes there's a with word instead, yeah. like three different endings that are a little confusing to me, but here you don't yeah. need anything. Yeah, generally you only need the colon if you're defining like a trait or a class. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so we could do that. And then uh, let's see about if we can name this. Uh, and yeah, I think this is where, so I think that's not happy. Let's see, can we do it after this? 
Yeah, I'm not sure we can name. Yeah, it doesn't look like I looked at the docs. Wrong. I don't think that's possible. Yeah, I don't think that's possible. Yeah. Um, but you could always put it in. I mean, you could put this whole thing in like object. I think here's probably an easy way to do this. You put this in object int extensions. And yeah, you're right. We can do this. Well, I don't need the braces, but then I need to be a little bit more careful. I think about my indentation here. So this actually shows up as part of this thing. And then I could do scala3.intextensions.all. And now I can do my special dish three or my special dish four. Or well, what did I do? Maybe I didn't have my special. Let me just remove that. Yeah. Oh, it, it's it's not oh. in this scope, it's in this other scope. So yeah, so I'll stick with the my special edition. So I think that's how you would accomplish that um, behavior. But so yeah, so I think this is really nice in terms of um, letting you kind of easily uh, add extension methods of things, letting you focus on um, intent. Uh, let me show you one or two other things I think are kind of interesting related to this. So. Notice here, I've defined this my special edition two as an extension method. And then I'm going down here and I can call my special edition two as an extension method, but I can actually also call it as a just normal method as long as it's in scope, which is kind of interesting. Um, so in a way, defining things as extension methods is like really nice. Of uh, they're almost like just as good as defining them the ordinary way because you can still call them like this, but you can also call them with a dot syntax, which is usually pretty nice. Uh, the other observation that at least I, I've had related to this as I've worked with this is it's really easy to go from one to the other. So like let's say um, let's go maybe we'll go down here and. Let's say that I've um, written some method like say combine, right? It's gonna take one int and it's gonna take another int and it's gonna return an int and it's gonna do just X plus Y. And I'm like, okay, that, that's really nice. I'd actually like to make this an extension method now. So all I have to do to change it is I just go extension, right? And then I basically grab this X in here, and I just need to pull it before the def. So it's the first one. And then I just got to slightly like fix my like commas and stuff. And now I've got an infix version of that. And if you think about like, I mean, I'll, I'll, like, I'll just kind of talk from like a library, like author perspective, like I think in Scala 2, going from the first one to the second one was like a lot more work. If you have to like, create this whole, let's see, where do we have it? I have to create this whole like implicit class thing for every one of these things. I have to like think about what I want to put in here. I have to find some scope to put it in, right? So like if you're in Zio, like these things, like I have to go down to the very bottom file, I create this like Zio, this, this, this extension operations, I put it in there and then it kind of works, but there's like a good amount of effort in that versus you can see this was like so easy. So if we like think about kind of, um, I guess ways we may start to like write code differently. I mean, they're definitely like, I guess more fundamental ones of like the macro system gives you like a lot more power in principle. And we talked about that, but just kind of like day-to-day -day things that are like easier. So we may see more of, it seems like this extension thing makes it like way easier to go from a normal just method that like sits on an object to a method on a class. And so I think we may see like, even more things defined as like methods on other people's classes because this just makes it so much easier than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Any questions on any of that? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, there's, there's a bit of discussion around when to use with not sure if you want to get into into that for like using this with maybe the type class pattern, um, but other than that, I don't think we have any questions. Maybe some are. Oh wait, thank you. In the case we control all the code in defs. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I totally missed this one. Um, in in case that we control all the code and definitions, so it's our 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 libraries, our our data types. Uh, do we see good reasons to use an extension method instead of writing the method straight on the class uh, and I would say generally no, unless 
there's some special reason why the compiler will only allow you to do things. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I think uh, reasons not to define, uh, or, or I'll say reasons to define extension methods for classes you control. Um, so I think the most common is uh, your operator only makes sense on a particular uh, subtype of the data. So for example, let's say I had some trait, my list. And so I could have lots of different operations on my list, right? I could like map it and you know, see how much Copilot's gonna write for me. I can flat map it, right? I can have all sorts of different operations on my list. Uh, but let's say I wanted to have something like a, uh, like a flatten operation. Um, So flatten really only makes sense if like the thing inside is also a my list. And so actually Copilot's being really good and as you're suggesting the alternative I can use here if I can use this like implicit evidence for myself. Um, but depending on how much evidence I need, like sometimes that can get like a little bit um, laborious. So that can be one good situation of an alternative way to do like that flatten method would be to do something, uh, I'll do something colons here, because I'll try to do the good scale of three thing and not colons. So here I could do something like extension um, A's, my list, my list of A, um, yeah, flatten is going to give me my list of A, and then. And no, this is another sort yeah, of. Yeah, th this is actually, yeah, that's actually a good thing. We, we did this one, because this is another little bit of a weird thing of like, Again, just because they're doing it this way, like I define my my list of A, and that needs an A type parameter. So like the A has got to go somewhere. And normally we used to be used to be over here, but like things always go from left to right in Scala, so it goes here. So it becomes a little bit weird looking, at least if we're coming from Scala two of the the type parameters kind of just like sitting here in the middle of space. I think a lot of times it's actually even written like this. Um, <laughs> But you can you can see how like this gives you like a pretty straightforward way, right? And you can give it a name if you want to, uh -huh. um, to do these operations on things where it only makes sense for a particular type. And I think depending on what you're doing, like I think this can sometimes be either just easier for you to do or easier for people to understand than than this. Where like I think this, if you if you understood extension methods, you'd be like. Okay, got it. I got an extension method. If I have a list of lists, I can flatten them. That makes sense. Um, versus this potentially requires understanding a little bit more concepts of like, what is this evidence thing? Or what is EV? Like, what is this weird less than colon less than? Like, what does that mean? How do I use that? Uh, so, I mean, there, you know, not to say one is always better than the other, but I think that can be one common case. And I think the other case where that uh, really comes home is. Uh, where you can't define an operator because of variance. Uh, so sometimes you you need something where you kind of need to introduce another type parameter and you can't quite do it with the variance on the data type itself. So the extension method can be a way to, to get around that. Um, I would say those are really the two main, I think probably only cases I can think of for- There's one, uh, there's one that might be, uh, that might- crazy. Oh, all right, cra cra you know what, craziness. Craziness is another good reason. You can never forget about craziness, uh, Scala reason. <laughs> uh, for, just for one example, in, in, uh, in Z layer, um, we added uh, it recently, the ability to um, uh, do sort of partial elimination of dependencies uh, using the, the, basically to get leftovers when using this, this triple arrow operator. I won't go too far into that, but turns out the only way to get this to work was to make it an implicit uh, extension method. Uh, and it couldn't work otherwise. Maybe that had to do with variance to some level, but uh, it just seemed like I tried it every way. And you know, implicit is one of these other tools. When you're getting crazy, it's just another option you can try to get this compiler to be happy. Right. Um, it can get like the, the type inference process to work in a slightly different way, which sometimes just <laughs> randomness can lead to one working where the other doesn't for you. Do you over the edge. One, one slight difference semantically with these two versions, though, um, that maybe is worth mentioning is that this will always show up. Like, let me yes. say, I, let's say yes. I have a list. Um, 
oops, val my list. So let's say we have a list of my list, my list of, let's just go int. So if I do my list.int, and let me actually rename one of these so we can tell the difference, flatten two. So my list dot, if I say flatten, we'll see flatten here. Oh, well, uh, maybe you should do the autocomplete because no one sees my screen. Oh. Can you um, trigger autocomplete? So you'll see, yep. you'll see flatten, that if you try to call that will not work. It'll, it'll like hit enter to autocomplete. It'll, yeah, it'll, it'll tell red. you that there's um, no instance. So, yeah, but the other one doesn't even show up unless, so flatten two wasn't even there. Um, if you just show that one more time. Um, so flatten is not even in that list because it doesn't match the right type of the extension method. So it depends on what you think is better. One is more discoverable. Maybe it'll show people that that method exists, but the other one is maybe more convenient. It kind of filters it out. It, de it depends on what your thoughts are. Um, but if I do my list of my list event, now you should see um, both. If you just type in like an A to re-trigger the search, I'm guessing. Um, there's flatten too. So now they both show up now that it's the right type. That. Uh, fat yeah. Um, so yeah, it's kind of the, uh, the one semantic difference there. Yeah. So I, I think if, if your operator only made sense in a narrow range of cases, like probably maybe for this flatten example, I think doing it as an extension could actually be better because you maybe don't want it to appear all the time. You only want it to appear when it's like the right kind of thing. But if you have something where like you kind of expect the evidence to be available most of the time, like maybe like some of the Z layer operations, like they require you to have a tag and like, 99.9% .9 of the time you should have a tag like there you kind of you want to give the error that like there was a tag and so they're trying to make it a method using evidence could be a better approach. Yep. Uh, cool, but I think I think that's all the details I know about about that. Cool. Um, good, question. good question. Are there some yeah, more? Really good question. Um, yeah. Uh, ooh, okay, some things are happening. There's some discussion about Tasty, but I'm not sure if that's been um, sorted out, the okay. internal Tasty uh, discussion. Um, opaque types have been mentioned, but I think that might be related to that extension. Uh, do, 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 we could definitely look at opaque types if people are interested. That could be interesting. So, okay, Kit, before we had the strange syntax for giving implicit, something like, Def something. Oh, the ah yes. So context bounds. I, I believe context bounds still exist, right? Um, the colon syntax. Uh, yes, yes, they, they they do. So yeah, let's do um, one of those. I guess we maybe we can go up here, and we can do like uh, def another weird weird int operator. And, oh, I guess this will have to have a type parameter. Yeah, yeah. So this will have an A, and yeah, this will have a type name, and maybe it won't even have an A. So I can now make some instances. This will be a string. Type yeah. Names. Oh, and I actually give this uh, an actual method. Def name is a string. Yeah. So, uh, and I think this is where you can do this with thing to say def name equals int. Uh, oh, and then yeah. So now here we could do something. Yeah, like, and we could. Well, so we, yeah, we can actually show a couple other things. So in Scala 2, we use this implicitly. You can actually use this summon word, which is the same as implicitly, but just maybe a, a better or maybe a more clear name. So I could say summon type name a dot name. And this will work. So yeah, the, the type bound is still, is still live. Yes. And this is basically identical to using type name type a. Name. The one benefit is you don't have to like now you don't have to give it a name, so that's nice. Um, so it's a little, I guess, less helpful, but you don't have to uh, re uh, redundantly uh, specify that. But it only works, I mean, it only, it only is that direct basically code translation uh, of putting this single type variable inside of here. So if, if you have a trait or a given that has multiple parameters, that will not work. It's only sort of for these, the common case, given type class is the type class pattern of having a single uh, type variable in a trait. Um, so yeah, that's still convenient in certain yep. cases. And that's called context, context bounds. At least it was in Scala 2. Yeah, I think that's uh, all right. <laughs> yeah. OK. Um, so I think we hit on a lot of the 
uh, implicit or given, given slash using slash extension stuff. Uh, are there any other questions of that? Or otherwise, you could hit on either opaque types or if there's something else in uh, yeah. Scalp if you want to look at. And, and if I missed any questions, please uh, ping them. I wasn't, the, the chat got a little long when I was uh, looking <laughs> at the screen. So huh. if I miss something, re up it or ask a new question. Or we can chat about opaque types. I wonder if there's any relationship there. Well, I guess maybe we could talk briefly about this with thing. Um, I kind yeah. of did that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm guessing, I, I actually don't know for sure, but just looking at the docs briefly, maybe you know more about this. I mean, the way that we did it before, I would imagine you'd say type name int. Like this is kind of the way you would have done it in Scala 2. Uh, and I except think you still can do that, yeah. You still can do that, but it looks like saying just with allows right. you to just sort of truncate that. Um, I wonder, I'm guessing that won't work in other situations. Like if it's given string, you can't just say with uh, Adam, maybe you can, no. I think it's, so I think it's kind of like also syntactic sugar for setting it equal to a new version of the trait. Maybe it's, it's, it's kind of hard to say. Yeah, so, so another thing you can do in, in the vein of kind of things that can be very concise, but maybe <laughs> depending on you're feeling too concise is like, let's say we had something, um, like let's say I had a, uh, JSON um, encoder. And so, uh, yeah, this is going to encode some value of A to a string, right? And so I'd like to define some JSON encoders. And so I could, yeah. Uh, let me get rid of this. So I can use, this is called that single abstract method syntax. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so it's, it's the same, like that existed in Scala 2 and Scala 3, but um, in combination with the, uh, with the given and with not having a name, you can, you can define some of these in a way that's like very, very terse here, right? Where like, I mean, the, the longer version of this in like Scala 2 would be something like an implicit val string JSON encoder, JSON encoder string is new JSON encoder string, def encode. Like these two, well, other than me putting an extra P there, these two say the same thing. Um, so this in a way is very nice, but just if you like see this for the first time, like that's kind of what that is, because uh, I think especially like in combination with the, the new given and with not having a name, you can be a little bit like what's going on here. Uh, an another thing that I, <laughs> full disclosure, just learned or vaguely remember <laughs> from before uh, is that apparently you can define these extensions directly on the traits as well. Yes, so exactly. Of, it's particular so, for the type classes can be, or yeah, the functional abstractions can be very nice. So I might be able to just do something like, oh, no, no, no. Um, I guess yeah. a, a uh def to json yeah exactly ring and then theoretically if i had a string down here right you and just know that I, hello yeah. and that's going to compile versus this will maybe not compile because there's no oh they both seem sad oh not this a oops that would have to be a so let's see if that works doesn't quite seem to work so um um, I think let's see. Implicit Scala three. Oh, see, so it wants you to import the, yes. the string encoder. Oh, interesting. So you don't just get that for free, even though it's defined inside of the JSON encoder. Is that correct? I think th I think they're really trying to get away from. Yeah. So if I do here, right? If I do import JSON encoder dot all, then I think one of these at least will work. Let's see. Oh, I think if you have to do dot given actually. Oh, right. Excuse me. Yeah. You have to explicitly import these, oh, these given. given. So that's another yeah. huge difference in Scala 3 is that before they would get included in wildcard imports, we kind of talked about that last week, but now you have to explicitly import them, which oh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm wondering if yeah. I define this on string itself, if that would be okay. Like, I don't know if any of these have just automatic precedence. I, I would hope, I would hope that that would be the case. Um, I mean, let me just test this really quickly. If I make my own type here, case class uh, foo, oh. Uh, name string and I um, make an object for foo and do a given JSON encoder for uh, a foo 
and I'll just do a dot name, let's say. Um, if I do foo hello dot to JSON, will that work or will it have me import? I'm hoping that works and it looks like that's working. Yes, okay. Yeah, so it looks like this, it has to basically be defined on the object of the type variable of a type class. And those will take precedence, it seems. Right, now I think if we take this, mm -hmm. let, me, let, me, let me get rid of this here mm -hmm. and let me pull it in here. Okay. Though sure. in this case, I think we need to say um, A and right. we need to then say- We need to say using. Or I could, yeah, using, exactly, using JSON encoder. Oh, sorry, I'll just say encoder. Uh, yeah, JSON exactly. encoder, because we want to reference it. JSON encoder of A, if I can type correctly. There we go. So in this case, you think maybe this will then resolve it, or it'll break everything. Let's, let's <laughs> see. What do we? Let's see. What do we? Yeah. Uh, do we have a second one? No, we don't have a second one. So okay, let's go through these one at a time. So now, mm, interesting. JSON. So now it explicitly wants you to maybe maybe we need to import the underscore here. Maybe that counts as a different namespace. I don't even know. Okay, it does. Wow, because so, these aren't givens; these are extension methods. These are extension methods, exactly. So yeah, I don't I don't know how I yeah, feel. Yeah, some of that's a little <laughs> weird. Oh, uh, we both these. Yeah. I want. Yeah, I wonder. It might be a little more difficult once people define stuff like this to just have a, like one thing we like for Zio is just to have that single import. Like, if you import the package object, you're going to get everything you need. The the extension. Right, because it's kind of interesting. Because right, if I do, um, let's see. I wonder how it'll handle um, if I do it the old-fashioned way. The old-fashioned way, I think, will still work as it did previously. So I think these that, are. That, the that's right. That's kind of what I was wondering about here. Yeah. But they're Stuff basically, I, I believe that these are going to be deprecated going beyond three points, whatever, one or something. There's eventually going to deprecate the old versions. And so you're only going to be able to sort of have this newer version where you have to be more explicit. Though it is a bit of a bummer that it's slightly more restrictive. Because, um, yeah, I'd imagine here then we wouldn't need to specify this and it should work. Let's do JSON2. Let's see. So I will not import that. Yeah, and that works. So we don't need to import the underscore versus JSON um, one will error unless we import explicitly the extension method. I yeah, hope I have, there's some I way have, to- I have a feeling there may be a pipe burning in the future about that. <laughs> I think so. I just don't really see, as long as you make non, or as long as you're coherent with your instances, as mentioned, like it can be very useful. So for instance, zio.json, when you do zio.json under, yeah. underscore, yeah. well, you don't even really need to have the dot underscore just by using a, a JSON encoder because the JSON encoder object has defined on the object, all of these implicits for the Scala classes like string and int and whatnot, you never need to, you, those are always going to be resolved. And so if you have a custom case class that you're deriving an encoding for that happens to reference string or int, it's just going to work because it's always going to find those because they're in that magical lookup scope that we talked about last week. They're in the companion object of the type class. Uh, yeah. But now you're going to have to, I guess, import zio dot json dot json encoder dot given. Well, I, 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 sure. I think what all the libraries are going to do is the package object is going to re-export all of them. So you're just going to do import <laughs> zio dot json either dot given or dot all or dot star, and you're just going to kind of get everything there. I yeah, guess. maybe we can. So you might have to have one extra import, but that does still seems, I don't know how helpful that yeah. is. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway. You do not like to take a step back on your ergonomics. <laughs> no, I, I like, I cling to my ergonomics. Um, you, you, you want to take many steps forward. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. So there definitely were some other questions, one of which was, I guess it's more a general thing, now that we've complained about some of these color three aspects. <laughs> As we've gone, what is the biggest benefit of using Scala, Scala 3 in your opinion? Any thoughts on what you like about Scala 3? Sure, yeah, I can definitely on that. So um, I think there are like probably like three levels of, of benefits you could say. So there's like things that are just going to make daily life nicer. Um, there are things you can do that you couldn't do before or were 
much harder. I love your automatic just enumeration and taxonomization of your uh, your different thoughts. Just <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now I feel like self-conscious of them. Let's categorize uh, them. <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> uh, and then there are like fancy things that libraries are going to do in the future that will help you. So for the first one, I mean, I, the, the bracelet syntax is nice, I think. I mean, different people can have different opinions, but I think probably the big, uh, one of the biggest wins here is these enum types. Uh, so we haven't covered it this time. Maybe we can either cover it later today or in another one of these sessions, but they're basically the, um, they're the case classes of some types, right? So if we talk about like data modeling, there's like some types, there's product types. Anytime you have a product type, we know we do case classes. We've got like a really straightforward way, like that's our tool for it. It's got all sorts of things built in, right? It's got automatic equals, it's got automatic hash code, it's got copying, it's got all this stuff for us. Um, and we didn't really have something like that for uh, some types. We kind of emulated it with like the, sealed trade and then the case classes extended the sealed trade, but it was a little bit like the stuff I was talking about with the implicit classes of like, there were all these like weird things like um, you know, how many of you have done like the sealed trade, my trait extends product with serializable. Does everyone know why you extend product to serializable? Is there like, do you like that? I mean, is there any point in doing that? Like, yeah, right, that, that's clearly kind of, you doing this like very low level mechanical thing to get around this like very particular like issue. Actually, it's not much of an issue, but aside from that, like, right, it would be way nicer if we just had some way of like expressing our intent. Um, and so here I could do like enum color. Boom, right? So we can spend a little more time on it, but like it's another one of those, instead of us having to kind of piece together other features, to support modeling data that is one thing or another, we've now got a built-in tool for that. So I think that's a really good thing there. Um, I think the other thing that is probably underappreciated there is this export keyword. Um, so just to show what that does, um, let's say I have like some kind of console trait. Uh, and it lets me print a line. And then uh, let's say I have some final case class like logger, let's say, and this has a console inside it. And maybe it does some other stuff, but if I want to, I could do export console.all. And now if I, have, let's say val my logger, my logger equals question of question. I can do my logger dot, uh, sorry, not console, but dot print line, hello. So that like one of the, there's this like, uh, like architect suggestion of like, um, right, encourage like composition over inheritance, right? So like don't have like the logger, like extend the console, just have the logger have the console inside it which is like great in general, but like, I mean, probably you've dealt with situations in the past where like you wanted to kind of export some of these parts of this interface. And so you would like manually do like def print line, right? Is, and you just like delegate to these things. And there's some boilerplate in this, uh, which right, Kit would point out. And there's also just some risk of inconsistency here of like, what if I go and I add another method to the console well, now if I remembered to export that method to the logger or not, versus like if I've done this export console.all, any method I ever add to the console is gonna be available on the logger. Um, so it's not always something you'd like, but you can definitely see uh, situations where it could be um, really, really useful. I wonder if this would work with that selectable type as well, because this could really be the full sort of replacement, hacky replacement for, for annotation macros. If you can basically generate uh, a bag of methods and then re-export them. So if like if we had val lenses equals uh, derive lenses yeah. uh, dot gen whatever person, then you could say right. export, export lenses, lenses all, yeah. dot underscore. Yeah, and you'd get name and whatnot. Um, uh, th th this is there's some selectable type. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm going to post an issue in the Discord that I was that I raised about this today. 
um, there's some there's some hope. There's maybe some hacky hope of an annotation uh, macro replacement because that Ooh. would be that would be pretty decent. Anyway, um, that's really cool. We did get another question that is maybe back to implicits that I missed. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back um, that before I keep going on. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, that that's great. Uh, export is super awesome, and I kind of forgot about that. And uh, yeah, um, but yeah, how do implicit conversions work in Scala three? So that's the that is the other implicit that we talked about last time, and there definitely is a change. Yeah, there. yeah. So right, so they tried to create another thing for that, which right was kind of another thing here, and another there's the Scala three version that we didn't talk about. Um, and so there's basically a trait, um, I believe. So let's try like um, val int to double. Um, and I think it's called, I call it, yeah, I think it's called conversion or implicit. I think it's just called conversion. Uh, yeah. Conversion, yeah. Uh, and so we can kind of look at the, the doc. Um, oops, let me, here, let me move this. So a class for implicit values that can serve as implicit conversions. Um, and so basically it's like, this was probably the most disfavored, the, the thing that caused the most trouble for people. So this like got even more control here where like, you're supposed to not just like define this as a given, but to do this like particular like class here. Um, so like here, if I wanted, um, I don't know, what should we, maybe let's make a final case class fancy string or something. Sure, yep. Uh, so then I could do, uh, okay, I could do given Oops. string to fancy string. And this would be a conversion from string to fancy string. And I think it could just be yeah, string to, same. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and let's see. Okay, and what do we got here? Oh, right, I, I should not mix and match my. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. So that will work. And now I think we can, let me just get rid of this and let's just compile again. Uh, oh, okay, so I think we got some issue from our little console example. So let's uh, double definition. All right, because I was just showing that, so I'll take that away. Okay, so this is compiling now and sorry let me get back to where we where we have our fancy string here. okay oh okay it's an angry fancy string okay uh so yeah so as long as we so it, it's so far it's basically just making us do some additional ceremony here of like i've just got to do this conversion um like i think if i try to do this as like given let's see what happens here does this work or is this just uh is disfavored it doesn't work we'll find out It's sad, uh, and but it, yeah, and so if you did like yeah. the old way, it had to be implicit def, uh, f, whatever, uh, conv, uh, s string to fancy string, whatever, and that should work. So the old stuff still works. Eh, two, is it sad? Fancy string, what, why is it sad? Uh, you have to get the result type there. Oh, there we now go. Okay. Happy. Yeah, now it's happy. Yeah, that's that's the old version versus the new version is a, just in, yeah. Because once again, it's that implicit word showing up, and it's sort of hard to tell what the difference. Like, is that an implicit? Uh, is that a given? Because it almost could be a given, except we talked about last time. Givens can't take arguments that are not implicit, but you could have done something like a given something. <laughs> where uh, there was, it has its own uh, using definitions. So now that everything has a different name, it could make more sense. So this basically what this would, this would get you a given of a fancy string. This defines a fancy string um, as long as there was a given of a string. And it's basically just going to wrap that string in the fancy string. So by, yeah, breaking up these words into a bunch of different words is really helpful because it's just like, no, no, there's like 10 different uses of implicits and they're all subtly yeah. different based on context. So now we have a given a, a conversion from string to fancy string. Yay. Right. And, and I think the other reason that the, the authors wanted to do this is in the future, they're going to put more restrictions on these things. Um, I think they're going to kind of say, like, unless you like explicitly import these, these definitely can't be, be used. Um, you have to write an apology uh, in a comment, <laughs> um, personally apologizing to Martin. <laughs>
Cool. So yeah, and yes, for now, you can ignore all this stuff and write things the old way and you're going to get maybe that more yeah. lax, uh, permissive uh, behavior with regards to importing and everything. But if you do use the new syntax, you're going to have to be a little more explicit about the imports. Hopefully some of that changes. I don't know. Uh, if anyone finds it a, a lively discussion on Discord, I'll, I'll throw my, my pitchfork in the ring, I suppose. Um, overall, I really appreciate the, the different directions, but there are, I think, I mean, Skull 3 is still early. I hope there's still time to, uh, you know, not many people are really using it um, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So hopefully that forces some changes and, and some additional thoughts. Um, Cause I feel like, yeah, a couple of things that rub me the wrong way are, are sort of, yeah, just the, that level of specificity needed. I don't know if that's necessary. I don't, you know, really run into that many issues with implicits these days. Um, and maybe I think the new naming and this clarity around that will, will hopefully help. Um, and then also, I think just the community has been learning better patterns of using implicits and have sort of been uh, yeah. coalescing on coherent instances, which helps make things more reasonable. And that, that's sort of, what was that other problem we ran into? Um, I, f I forget, but there was, another, there was another thing that was a little, oh yeah, the, I mentioned it briefly, but like there's that, you can, so you can use a colon to specify instead of instead of braces, but sometimes there's the width that we looked at in that one case yeah. up here yeah. for type name. And then there's sometimes with extension methods, you don't need anything. I feel like that's a little weird to have like three different ways. And I get there's probably a reason for it, but I don't want to be thinking like, do I need a colon? Do I not need a colon? Or do I need to yeah. use the width keyword? Um, I wish we like just always use width or always use colon or something, even if it's not strictly necessary syntactically. Like consistency is better than just some yeah, being optimal in all cases, but then making everything slightly different, in my opinion. Anyway, um, cool. Uh, yeah, so do people have other um, other questions or we can go back to kind of the, uh, like I think we had the first set of cool, or my thoughts on cool Scala features, but we can also do the rest of them or if people have more thoughts on implicits or other features, we can do any of that stuff. I think, let me check the Zoom. Make sure there was no, I think we got all the Zoom questions. And in the Discord, I think there were some comments, but let me see if they're I'm looking for question marks. Uh -huh. um, oh yeah, you know what? From now on, I'm going to ask that like when people ask a question that they definitely want as a question to use some sort of emoji. Uh, maybe a, a snow uh -huh. emoji, something visual. I'll, we'll figure that out for next time. Uh, fire, lots of fire, yeah. Uh -huh. um, so do that next time. Then I can scan it easily when I lose track, but I think um we're good um so yeah okay. just to clarify for dom um i'm not sure if you asked this before i clarified but just to re-clarify yeah you can still use the old way and you don't have to migrate your code not yet i don't know i'm sure there's some documentation around when they're planning on removing the ability to do things the old way but uh yeah yeah there, and, there's also i think a compiler flag i think it's called like future or something that exactly will Blair has mentioned that source future yeah. and, and yeah. so that will force you to do things in the new way, if you don't want to be stuck between worlds. Um, the future, but when is the future going to arrive? Not we, now. Cannot say, we cannot say for sure. And will the future change? Can we change the future from the past? I think so. Uh, yeah, kill the, kill all the butterflies you see. Um, can I, oh, oh, oh yes, and another question with the fire emoji now. Can yeah. I do a given uh, JSON encoder string and JSON encoder JSON decoder string. Um, so can you do an intersection of two traits as a given? That's an interesting thing. Let's really try good. it out. Let's try it out, yeah. Yeah, generally, um, it, uh, I think it tends to be a, a type called like JSON codec, which extends both of those, but that would be sort of the same idea. So I think you could do, I'd do such a thing. So given JSON encoder string, and JSON decoder string, obviously in this case. I think that might need to be a with, or, which does kind of raise the two, two different meanings with. Oh, there's the with, like yeah. No, I think the and works. I mean, that's because right, that's, that's the new intersection type, right? I, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, the, though, like when you do extends, you still need the like, right? If you do A extends B with C with D, you still need the with there. So I'm just ooh. not sure. It's, it's sad, I may have typed something wrong. What does it say? Implicits is not a class type. Oh, true. I think I think so. I think what we would need to do in this case is do what basically they do in in the oh. libraries, which is oh, does that work? Well, yeah, let's, let's, let's maybe. Uh, I think it's the same. Just, uh, yeah, because width just turns oh, that, that right. That's just yeah, yeah. 
So I think um, what we would need to do is case class JSON codec um, of A, and then you could have your encoder, no, your encoder, JSON encoder, your decoder. And yeah, then, I wonder if can you do something like given object X extends oh. JSON encoder. <laughs> I think maybe, yeah, try, try to just take it out for a sec. Wait. So what can we do? Huh? <laughs> I don't think so. That'd be cool. Because like in Tau 2, you do an implicit object. Um, would you say extends or would you just do, would you do this thing? Or I was thinking we would do extends, but I mean, I don't know. Cool is of type. Then you'd have to say that <laughs> object x extends. I didn't know you could use the object keyword like that, or would it be like object like that? Like the I don't know if you can do that. <laughs> we may have to go back. I, that, that does not look like Pascal to me, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but apparently it does not look possible. Maybe with implicits. Oh, wait, maybe with implicits you could have done this, but maybe that's a restriction. Yeah. No. A new. Let me just copy this so we don't go crazy. New JSON encoder with that. Okay, so that looks, well, we've added errors elsewhere because yeah. we've changed a whole bunch of stuff, but at least it looks like that um, definition doesn't break. Is it all compiling now? Yeah, it's all compiling now. So, yeah. okay, you used to be able to do so that. Can Maybe I, so can I do given? Yeah. Oh. You can. And Why was it now I could probably? Yeah. Do I mean, I think sometimes maybe? we just need very. Okay. No, I don't know what happened there before. Okay, I must have screwed something up with uh, something. So okay, all right. Um, well, oh, I, I guess what I had, oh, what I had was class. I had this. That's right, what I we'd have the explicit class here. So yeah. So, so with, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So that will work. Yay. <laughs> Huzzah. Very cool. Lots of intermediate fail states, but we figured it out. Um, oh, yeah. And of course, imports should be the, the asterisk instead of underscore now. So we've been doing underscore uh, in, in terms of the future. The future. Someone mentioned that. Um, cool. I don't know if that's a bug. I don't know if that's a bug because I think with this syntactic sugar for basically just whatever you put there doing new and then that thing beneath. Well, so, so the only case where that's not true is like, let's say I have like trait A, uh, oops, trait B and then trait C, right? So I can do, um, let's say trait uh, D extends A with oh, B sure. with C, right? And that works, but I don't think I am allowed to do, yeah, that's not valid syntax. So yeah. you're kind of, you're able to use it in this tight position. You're not able to use it in this extends position. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I, yeah, the, and this, this width here is definitely strange to me. Just well, someone other... did not retain, uh, get to do an audit of their API before uh, releasing uh, the next Scala version. <laughs> It's like it's because they removed all these overloaded versions of implicit, but then they added yeah, yeah. overloaded versions of width. It seems a little odd. Um, it's yeah, that's just super odd to me. Uh, but yeah, but it still looks like this is just direct syntactic sugar for basically doing equals new that exact thing, which yeah, I, I, you know, I think any implicit val can be replaced with given and preserve the value as I understand it. Yeah. Oh, I meant, I meant this like weird width rules, just that it lets you, it sort oh, of yeah. work to defining the new, but it didn't work here, even though theoretically that is kind of copy pasting that, but I guess it has yeah. to be a single trader type. Anyway, little details. I'm not sure if anyone wants to open up any bugs <laughs> for any of these things, um, go for it. Um, but I'm not sure if it's on purpose or not, might be. Um, hopefully this settles down. Scala 4 is going to be perfect. On fire. On fire. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but no, fire represents a question. So, uh, but anyway, instead, of, okay. So I think, oh, oh, it used to be as instead of with, and that may be all right. I wouldn't have minded that, but anyway, I'm sure the naming wars are already fought. And, yeah, yeah, and, that, yeah. Many people have died there. 
Okay, but uh, sweet. We could be a splinter cell or whatever. I don't know. Uh, all right. So I think that's all the questions. And right. we near we near the end time. So yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think that's yeah. We so we we talked about um, the things that are just going to make your life like easier. Uh, let me see if I can find my little. I had too many lists here. Uh, things that you can. Uh, oh, so um, then there's some things that you can do in Scala 3 that you just couldn't do in Scala 2. So probably the biggest thing on, on my list here would be uh, union types. So like if you think about, um, say we had some trait ZO, uh, Maria, just so, some, someone might do something called ZO. I, I wouldn't really know anything about it. Um, but if we had some like diff operator, that had like two ZOs, let's say, that had an R1, an R2, a E1, a E2, an A and a B. And let's say I had like a left, was a ZO, R1, E1, A, and a right, it was a ZO, R1, or R2, excuse me, E2, B. And then let me give myself a little F. Uh, that'll take a, a and a B to a C, so, a C. so in Scala 2, one way I could express the way that the environment types of these two compose is with intersection, or in Scala 2 it was with, or now we could use and, and that had this very like natural interpretation of like, you know, if this needs some services, if this needs a logging service, and if this needs a database service, then this thing here needs both a logging service and a database service. And that seems like totally logical and it like always works on Scala 2 and Scala 3 and it's wonderful. But on Scala 2, we had no way of expressing the same thing for a, a covariant type, uh, which is like this error here. What we'd really like to say is, well, if this thing can fail the database error and this thing can fail the logging error, then this thing could fail with either a database error or a logging error. It could fail with the union of those two types of errors. And in Scala 2, that type just like didn't exist. That idea was not expressible. Versus in Scala 3, it's actually expressible exactly like this. Um, oh, I need uh, equals question, question, question. Ah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> um, and, and when you look at this, like it almost, I mean, maybe if you're like geeky, you always have like a mathematical like beauty to it, right? Of like the contravariant type composes through intersection, the covariant type composes through union, it, right? There's this like duality of like, these are like the two different basic ways that you could compose two types. It reflects this like underlying reality of the domain that like you need both services and can fail to either error. It's like, very beautiful, but like you just literally could not express this like half of the idea in Scala 2. Um, so it's probably going to take time for like libraries to really use this because we've got to support Scala 2 for a while, I guess, get all your organizations to upgrade to Scala 3 faster and we can do it faster. But I think that's kind of the second like category of like concepts that were like not really expressible or like only expressible through like weird workarounds in Scala 2. Like probably another example here would be um, partial type application of like, if I wanted to kind of describe some like um, type class that like had one hole in it and I had like a map that had two holes, I had to do these weird like type lambdas or use compiler plugins, like that's better now. Um, so that'd be my second category. And then my third category would be like the super fancy stuff of like macros, inline, match types. Um, there's a derives keyword, kind of things you're probably not gonna use, like I would guess yourself at like your company unless like, you're kind of really doing like an internal like library for like a big part of your company, but that you'll probably over time see libraries that you use taking advantage of to give you more cool features as like we get to the point where like we can kind of really have a big enough market to kind of be developing like Scala 3 specific functionality. Okay, so box over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just checking the thing. Okay. Uh, well, people are talking about maybe explicit nulls and some other fancy stuff. Um, oh yeah, we can we can do that another time. Yeah, there's yeah. Some, some interesting stuff there, and also some interesting stuff that I think doesn't work as well as it should there. So uh, yeah, that'd be cool to talk about. That's what yeah, that's kind of what they were discussing. So it would be interesting. To me. If we could have a follow up session in a few weeks or a little later, 
um, about, yeah, just kind of reviewing all this Scala 3 stuff, rapid fire. Yeah, uh, totally. We didn't touch on, but yeah, that was, that was fun. There's surprisingly a lot to implicits. Um, and uh, we spent two weeks on it, but I think we, we can safely uh, plant our flag in it yeah. for now. Um, yeah. yeah, thanks everyone. Uh, let's, yeah, let's catch up next Friday. Um, yeah. Ask us if you want us to cover any specific topics. Cheerio. Thanks, Adam. Bye. Bye, everybody.